We've previously discussed at length how Series 8 of Doctor Who has continually bogged down in its apparent need to superficially validate insecure fans with the notion of a darker, edgier Doctor, so it's kind of fitting that the finale sees Moffat abandon all restraint and go full-on edgelord. <laughs> Dark Water opens with Clara's boyfriend, Danny Pink, being run over and killed in a scene that is actually really well done. What makes it work so well is how shockingly abrupt it is. We see Danny walking through the park and about to cross the road, but we barely even register it because we're so focused on his conversation with Clara. There's no grand foreshadowing or build-up, just one moment he's there and the next he's gone. There's such a cruel irony in how Danny's death is so mundane, given that this is a show about wacky sci-fi adventures and space battles. This irony is clearly deliberate on Stephen Moffat's part as Clara even comments on it, and it makes it understandable that she would run to the man with a magic time travel machine and demand that he put things right. Speaking of which, the following scene in which Clara attempts to blackmail the Doctor by destroying the keys to the TARDIS is very powerful, or at least it had the potential to be. See, the emotional impact is very much dependent on the context, and given that Danny and Clara have so little chemistry together as a couple and the fact that she has spent most of the series actively lying to him, I find it hard hard to really be invested in their relationship. Without that investment, this whole performance just comes off as Clara being whiny and melodramatic. It's like in Torchwood End of Days when Gwen starts screaming at Jack when Reese is killed after spending most of the series cheating on him with Owen. Granted, that scene is also terribly written and performed to begin with, which doesn't help, but it has the same effect. Anyway, as it turns out, the Doctor was in control the entire time, but rather than being angry with Clara, he vows to take her to the afterlife, wherever that might be, in order to bring Danny back. This results in them landing at the 3W facility, where we are introduced to Missy and the concept of the titular Dark Water, and we also get the infamous Don't Cremate Me scene. Now, I'm not going to be as harsh on this as you might expect given the intro. I mean, yes, it is needlessly and obtusely disturbing, and you'll likely get severe tonal whiplash if you try to binge this series in order given that the previous episode was all about magical trees, but the reason why I'm more lenient is because it's body horror, and as we soon find out, this is a Cyberman story. Body horror and Cybermen basically go hand in hand. It's what they are all about, and I think some writers have lost sight of that over the years. Channel Pup actually made a really good video essay on the subject a while back, which I highly recommend, pointing out how the best Cybermen appearances of the revived era, Rise of the Cybermen, Age of Steel, and World Enough and Time, have more of a focus on the human tragedy of conversion rather than on making them into super powerful killing machines that can fly and shoot lasers. There's a lot this story gets wrong with its portrayal of the Cybermen, particularly in the second part, which we'll be diving into shortly, but I will give Moffat some credit for nailing the body horror aspect. So having learned about the afterlife, Clara has the opportunity to talk to Danny, whose consciousness has been uploaded to the Neversphere. However, not trusting that it is Danny, she asks him to tell her something only he would know, which he is unable to do. Now, I'm sure Moffat envisaged this as being high-stakes emotional drama, but again, and yes, this is going to be a running theme, it just highlights how little there is to be invested in as far as their relationship goes. I mean, is there really nothing he could have said to try and convince her, like recalling a private conversation they'd had, or a pet name or something. It's almost like these two barely even know each other. While this is going on, we discover in a genius twist that the Cybermen were hidden in plain sight the entire time, concealed in the tanks by dark water, leading to the cliffhanger where Missy reveals herself to be the master. While not faultless by any means, dark water is tightly packaged and streamlined. It knows what it wants to do and accomplishes it efficiently. With Death in Heaven on the other hand, the things it chooses to prioritise are strange. Rather than dealing with the immediate threat, there's this whole focus on the Doctor being made President of the Earth and Missy being taken prisoner by unit and blowing up a plane, which serves no particular function in the wider scheme of the narrative. Clara, meanwhile, is pretending to be the Doctor in an utterly bizarre scene that seemingly only exists to give Moffat a soundbite to put in the next time trailer. The fact that the title sequence swaps the names around and replaces Capaldi's eyes with Clara's gives the impression the episode is going to commit to this idea, but it gets abandoned almost immediately. We do 
do get to learn a bit more about Missy's plan, which is to pollinate dead bodies with the living consciousnesses of the Neversphere, at the same time upgrading them into a cyber army. There are some logistical quandaries I have with this scheme, like does every consciousness get downloaded back into their original body, as in the case of Danny, and if that is the case, then how does that work if Missy is taking people from the future as well as the past? Also, if Missy already has the Neversphere and the pollen with which to convert dead bodies, then why go to the trouble of setting up 3W and fabricating the idea of there being an afterlife on Earth. This really is one of those where the more you think about it, the more it starts to unravel. But plot holes are something I can get past if the main thrust of the narrative is engaging enough. What's really frustrating is the way the Cybermen are presented in all this. Dark Water ended with a nice homage to the invasion from 1968, with the Cybermen marching from St. Paul's Cathedral. However, this immediately gets undermined in the opening of Death in Heaven as onlookers start posing for selfies with them. Now, I'm not saying that this wouldn't happen if this was real life, but that isn't the point. Okay, I know I said earlier that the Cybermen are all about body horror and not about being super powerful murdering machines, but if anything, Death in Heaven has the opposite problem to previous entries like Nightmare in Silver in that Moffat seems to go out of his way at every opportunity to make the Cybermen as unthreatening as possible. The concept of corpses being converted in their graves is fittingly morbid and ties into that aforementioned body horror, but these zombie Cybermen don't do anything except stagger around and do a safety briefing for Missy, which again is not out of character for this version of the Master, but it just makes the Cybermen look like a joke, especially since they show no autonomy of their own and are just foot soldiers in Missy's plan to give the Doctor an army. At one point, the Doctor warns Clara against activating Danny's emotional inhibitor, saying that he will snap her neck. But yet there's plenty of other Cybermen standing all around her, and none of them are snapping any necks. There is no sense of there being any threat here. The idea of Missy attempting to turn the Doctor to the dark side is an interesting one, and it serves as a good starting point for her character arc across this era of the show, establishing a precedent for Moffat not playing her as a straightforward villain. The emotional drama between Clara and Danny, on the other hand, and the pseudo-intellectual gibberish about how love is a promise, again might have hit harder if I was invested in their relationship. And it's a shame that the resolution of the entire plot with Danny saving the day effectively hinges on this. Following on from that, we get what might just be Stephen Moffat's most tone-deaf misjudgment, which is saying something considering he once portrayed domestic violence as a joke, where he decides that the best way to honour the character of Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, played by the late Nicholas Courtney, is to have the Doctor salute his reanimated corpse. This also basically confirms, as pointed out by Mr. Tardis, that every character in the show, including the Doctor's past companions to have died on Earth, is now a Cyberman and fully aware of that fact. So yeah, that's not horrific at all. The episode concludes with a drawn-out sequence of the Doctor and Clara going their separate ways, with Clara believing the Doctor has found Gallifrey and the Doctor thinking Clara's got Danny back. Incidentally, I'm glad Moffat didn't go down the route of having Danny come back and instead had him return the boy he killed as a soldier. It's a fitting end to his arc, and one of the few times there are actual real consequences to main characters dying in his era. But the fact this ending is so drawn out and the episode labours on it so much gives the impression that this is goodbye for Clara. Probably because at the time it was written, Jenna Coleman was intending to leave the show, but I'll save that for when we get to review Last Christmas. While it is far from perfect, Dark Water still holds up reasonably well as the opening episode of a two-part finale, which makes it all the more frustrating that Death in Heaven squanders that potential with Cybermen that don't pose any threat, and a plot with some decent ideas but which ultimately devolves into a poorly judged mess. As good as the build-up might be, if you don't stick the landing then it's all for nothing, and in that sense the Series 8 finale is sadly kind of a summation of Moffat's writing as a whole. I'm Midnight, and I travel in time and space. And trains.